Cassie and in my kitchen today we're going to be making Japanese chocolate bananas. The only reason that I call these Japanese chocolate bananas is because you can usually find them at Japanese festivals called Matsuri. At summer Matsuri, these chocolate bananas are a great sweet snack to cool off with. However, due to travel restrictions this year, then a lot of Matsuri have been cancelled, postponed or scaled down. So I thought I would make these at home. So to make these, we're going to be making it slightly differently to how they would make it at a normal Japanese summer festival. Normally, at a matsuri, they would use several vats of different colours of melted chocolate, and they would put an entire frozen banana into a, a vat of chocolate, and then use the other ones to decorate the top of the banana. And then, because the banana is frozen, it would set almost instantaneously. However, we are not going to be making so many chocolate bananas that we need vats of melted chocolate. So instead, we're going to be using a spoon to cover the banana. The only thing that you should be aware of is that you should chill your bananas beforehand. If you don't really mind about all of the decorations, you can freeze your bananas and then put the melted chocolate on top. However, the chocolate will set almost instantaneously, so you can't really put any decorations on them. So what we're going to be doing today is putting them in the fridge and then using the melted chocolate to go on top of that. If you keep your bananas at room temperature, you will find it very hard to put the chocolate onto the banana. It will sort of melt off and there will be like sections of uncovered banana and it's not going to look good. It might taste the same, but it's not going to look good. So it's best to put them in the fridge for about half an hour beforehand. But anyway, this is a super simple but super fun recipe, so let's get to it. So these are the ingredients that you'll need for your chocolate bananas. We're going to be using about 50 grams of chocolate per whole banana. And for our decorations, you can use whatever you want, but today I'm going to be using some chopped almonds, some sprinkles, and some chocolate pens. You're also going to need something to spear the banana, like an ice lolly stick, but today I'm going to be using takoyaki sticks. And to make the pink banana, we're going to be using some red food coloring. This is a red powder, so I'm not too sure how that's going to go with the chocolate, but I guess we'll see. So to start off, we just need to make sure that everything is ready. We need to make sure that we have enough space in our fridge for one of these, and we need to make sure that all of our decorations are ready to hand. Because as soon as you put the melted chocolate onto the cold bananas, it's going to start setting, so you need to work fairly quickly to make sure that you can decorate it all properly. My bananas have already been in the fridge overnight, but you should probably put them in there for about 30 minutes. So first we're just going to peel the bananas, put them on their sticks and put them into the fridge, and then we're going to start melting our chocolate. I want to just use up all of my chocolate, so I'm just going to be using all four of these packets for four bananas. If you're doing this with small children, then you probably shouldn't have something that has a sharp end, so just make sure that you use some normal ice lolly sticks. And although these sticks are fairly short, then they're still going to be fine. We're just going to put it through the banana like this. So let's get peeling. I just kind of end up pinching the end to get that kind of brown bit off when I peel any banana. So when we do this, we want the heavier end to be at the bottom. So the heavier end is usually the top of the banana. So we're just going to get the top of the banana and we're going to turn it over and then we're going to put the skewer in like this. Ta -da! It's easier to hold if the heavier end is at the bottom of your chocolate banana. So I'm just going to do that for the rest of them. This one has a little bit of brownness to it, but um, bruised bananas are usually fine to eat. But if you want, you can just cut those off. Okay, and now that's all done, we're just going to put these in the fridge and we're going to start melting our chocolate. Okay, so I'm just going to melt the chocolate over hot water. So first we're going to boil some water and then we're going to turn off the heat and put our bowl of chocolate on top. You can do this in the microwave, but you'll have to put it into the microwave, then take it out after 30 seconds, give it a stir, and then put it back into the microwave for another 30 seconds until it's melted. However, I find that when you do it over hot water, then you can control the temperature of the chocolate a bit more easily, and it doesn't get too hot, and there's less risk of it getting burnt. So we're going to start with the dark chocolate, and I'm going to be putting almonds and pink decoration over the top. 
So now that it's boiling, we're just going to turn the heat off and put our bowl of chocolate over the top. And then into this bowl, I'm going to just put all of my chocolate. You can either cut up the chocolate before you put it into the bowl, but I'm just going to be a bit lazy and break it up as I put it in. And this is a little Japanese chocolate pen, and basically you have to put it in hot water to get it all melty so that you can use it. So I'm just gonna do that. I'll just pop this back on here to keep it nice and warm. And now we're going to get out our refrigerated bananas. Okay, so just before I put all the chocolate onto the banana itself, I'm just going to test out this thing um, to see how it draws. It's always a good idea to test out icing bags or chocolate piping bags beforehand to just make sure that there are no air bubbles and to get a feel for how you can draw with it. So that seems fine, so now I'm just going to get out my bananas. So we've got all our bananas here, so I'm just going to move the non-chocolatey ones to one side. And then I'm just going to be covering this banana. Now, usually you would do this with a tray underneath, but my refrigerator is so small, I have carved out an exact space just for the rack itself. I don't have any space for the tray underneath. The tray is actually kind of large. So I'm just gonna be putting it in there and I'm just gonna be making a bit of a mess in my fridge and I'll just clean it up later. So now we're going to get our melted chocolate and I'm just gonna take it off the heated water. And then we've got to work relatively fast with this, so I'm just going to cover it straight up and then put on my chocolate pen and then put on the almonds and put it back in the fridge. Okay, so now it's all like this, I'm just going to put these all back in the fridge and go on to our next one. So now we're going to go on to the milk chocolate one, but I don't think we need to go into depth about this, so I'm just going to put it on high speed and we're just going to get to it. If you're having fun so far or you're thinking of making this, then don't forget to press that like button so that I know that you're enjoying my video. Okay, so so far I've noticed that my chocolate is still melting quite a lot when I put it onto the banana. So what I'm going to do, instead of boiling my water again, I'm just going to use the pre-boiled water from my previous one. And then I'm going to put the chocolate bowl away from the heat source and so it will slowly be setting a little bit as I put it onto the banana and hopefully that will stop it sticking to the bars as much. I'm going to just turn it on for a little bit until it's just boiled and then put it back on. So there's still like this sort of lump here but I'm going to take it off now and it should just be able to melt with the heat of the rest of the chocolate. Guys, I'm so sad whilst I was doing this pink one. I got some of it on the brown one. No. But yeah, that was the only problem. So let's see what they look like after some time in the fridge. Okay guys, so I actually have a confession to make. These aren't as perfect as they look just there. Let me show you what they look like on the other side. is that the chocolate got really stuck to the metal and there is actually a very simple solution to this. After putting the chocolate bananas into the fridge just flip them over after two to five minutes and just make sure that they don't get stuck. But I make mistakes so you don't have to. 
And the important thing is that they tasted good anyway. But that's it for today, I'll see you next week. Bye! Thank you.